My name is David Gerster. I am the Vice President of Data Science at BigML. What that really means is that I go around and I do a lot of talks uh, like this one, uh, where really I'm trying to explain how fundamentally easy the concepts are uh, for predictive modeling and other types of machine learning. So I'm going to start with a simple demonstration of uh, predictive modeling using a data set of uh, 699 cancer biopsies. And each biopsy has a known result, which is it is either benign or malignant. Uh, and this label is known for each model. And if I go over to BigML, uh, I've already taken the step of loading this data set uh, into the BigML tool. And you can see it has uh, a bunch of different features here, a bunch of different numerical measurements. Clump thickness, uniformity of cell size, uh, nine different things. And then the last thing here is the class, which is either uh, benign or malignant. And you can see that most of them are class two, which is benign. That's good news, right? Uh, and then there's a smaller number that is class four, that's malignant, that's bad news. And so <clears throat> BigML makes it super easy just to train a model. And so I'm just gonna do one click model. This is all happening in the Amazon cloud. Uh, BigML crunches this data. Uh, it figures out what the best predictors are of benign or malignant. Here we have a decision tree. You can see here at the top of the decision tree, this represents 100% of the data, this guy up here. Uh, and the first split that the BigML model makes is based on this feature uniformity of cell size. And so now the way these numerical features work is they're all on a scale of one to 10 with 10 meaning totally abnormal and one meaning totally normal. And so this is saying that if the uniformity of cell size is greater than two, right, so from three to 10, where 10 is the most abnormal, then 80% of the time, uh, the biopsy with that measurement is going to be malignant. Then over here on the other side, uh, we have the biopsies with uniformity of cell size less than or equal to two. Uh, and 95% of the time, uh, those are gonna be class two, which is benign, right? So just this one rule gives us uh, a huge benefit in our data set, right? If you look at this, the two classes are slightly weighted towards benign. Over here, you know, we have uh, a subgroup that's 80% malignant, right? And over here we have a subgroup that's 95% benign. So that's a big improvement in the purity of our model uh, just by making that one rule, right? BigML Big found this rule that if the uniformity of cell size is more than two, meaning that the cell sizes are somewhat irregular in the biopsy, uh, then 80% of the time, that's gonna be a malignant biopsy. And if I wanted to, you know, I could look at it in the sunburst view. Basically the fact that we're seeing a lot of bright green here means that we have a very good model. If I wanted to, uh, I could evaluate the model with a couple of clicks. If I wanted to, I could make it into an ensemble like a random forest. But we have limited time, so suffice it to say, this looks like a pretty good model, right? And I want you to remember this pattern, right? Based on uniformity of cell size being greater than or less than two, right? Just keep that in the back of your mind. So, you know, that was kind of boring. I mean, that was really almost too easy. So I'm gonna make things a little bit more difficult. I'm gonna go back to my data set And I'm going to get rid of the labels. 
And in place of the labels of benign or malignant, I'm going to take an anomaly score, and I'm going to train a model based on that anomaly score. And so this is, uh, so I'm going to take this problem where we have the labels. I'm going to hide the labels from big ML. I'm going to replace them with this anomaly score. And I'm going to see if we can still get insight into this biopsy data without knowing the result of uh, is the biopsy benign or malignant. And here's how BigML's anomaly detection algorithm actually works. Uh, let's say you have a bunch of data points and you are interested in figuring out if this one is an anomaly or not. Now you can kind of tell by looking at it that it's surrounded by a bunch of other data points. It doesn't look that anomalous. And here's how the big ML algorithm works. It basically draws random boxes and it keeps drawing them until this dot has its very own box, until the dot is isolated in its own individual box. And in this example, it took 10 lines to isolate that data point in its own box. And intuitively, you can see that uh, 10 lines, it's not that anomalous. Now, this is a very objective measurement of how anomalous a data point is, right? You're drawing these lines, the number of lines it takes is a very concrete measure of how anomalous a data point is. And you can see that if I did this 100 times, I would get some average measure of how many lines I have to draw uh, before it had its own rectangle, right, before that data point was isolated. Now here's this guy out here. Now this clearly looks like an anomaly, right? And in fact, it only takes uh, four lines to give this, this its own box, right, to isolate this data point in its own box. And again, if I repeated this 100 times, I would get an average of, you know, 4.2, and that would be a very concrete measurement of how anomalous this data point is. So that's the basic idea of how BigML does anomaly detection. We isolate each data point. We calculate how long it takes to isolate that data point, how many lines you have to draw. Um, and then we convert that into a normalized score on a scale between zero and one. And that's the anomaly score, okay? All right. So next, because again, the predictive model, that was like way too easy, right? I clicked a mouse, I got the model, you know, that's boring. So I'm gonna remove the labels of benign or malignant from this breast cancer data set. I'm gonna train an anomaly detector on this uh, unlabeled data, and then I'm gonna create a new data set that has the anomaly scores as labels. So the thing I'm trying to predict will be the anomaly score instead of trying to predict uh, benign or malignant. So first thing, I'm just gonna do configure anomaly. Going to get rid of the class of benign or malignant. Now I just have these nine things, right? Again, these are nine measurements of the biopsy. I'm going to do create anomaly detector. And so now BigML is drawing these lines, right? For each data point, it's drawing these lines, counting how many lines you have to draw before the data point is isolated in its own little box. And it's doing this hundreds of times for each data point. So you can get a robust measure of just how anomalous each data point is, each biopsy. And BigML gives me this uh, cool little chart with the top 10 data points that are the most anomalous. And what I'm gonna do is something called batch anomaly score. And basically this is a way to generate a data set that, um, that has uh, the score combined with all the measurements so I can train my model on the score. So I'm just telling BigML to uh, 
uh, output that data set for me. I just click a button. By the way, I don't have to touch the keyboard, right? I'm just clicking the mouse pad. Pretty awesome. And here we go. So this is the same data set, but in addition, it has this extra field, which is the anomaly score for each data point. And you can see that that varies between uh, 0.29 to 0.65. The higher the score, the more anomalous the biopsy is, okay? And I'm gonna train a predictive model, but I'm going to leave out the label. So I'm hiding the label from the model. And the only thing the model has to go on is this anomaly score. And so what we're doing is we're using predictive modeling to explain the anomaly scores, right? We're saying, hey, Big ML, I don't know if these biopsies are benign or malignant. I just want you to help me explain biopsies that look kind of weird, right? That's basically what we're doing here with the anomaly score. So I'm uh, gonna set the score as the output that I'm trying to predict. And I'm just going to do create model. And you can see that without the labels, BigML is able to find this pattern where if uniformity of cell size is greater than two, then we predict the anomaly score um, to be highly anomalous, right? If you remember, this is the exact same pattern that BigML found when we trained a model using the labels, right? When we used the labels, BigML found this exact same structure in the, da in the data. Uh, so it's pretty amazing that even without the labels, just with this anomaly score, we're able to find the same pattern in the data. Now, <clears throat> all we know is that, all this tells us technically, is that if uniformity of cell size is more than two, then you have a highly anomalous data point, right? But this is a huge clue, right? If, if for some reason you didn't have the labels, this would give you a huge clue that, hey, if the uniformity of cell size is more than two, then that group tends to have a higher anomaly score on the whole, right? And uh, you know that lurking in there is this, uh, this minority class, this bad class, right? In this case, it's cancer. Right? There's this bad guy, cancer, who's lurking in your data set. And just by knowing that this is something that looks weird, you can use that information to help track down the bad guy. Right? That's the idea. So again, without knowing whether the biopsies are actually benign or malignant, we're still able to use anomaly detection to give us a clue about what bad actors might be lurking in our data set. And actually, the anomaly score gives uh, incredible separation between uh, the benign and the malignant biopsies. So if I put the anomaly score on the horizontal axis here, the red histogram uh, represents the malignant biopsies, the green one represents the benign biopsies. You can see we have this great separation between the benign and the malignant, right? almost all of the malignant biopsies have an anomaly score uh, more than around 0.45. And so again, it's really amazing. Uh, Big ML doesn't know anything about biology, right? Doesn't know anything about um, the actual domain of this data set. But when you hide the labels from it, it can still find these structures in the data, right? This anomaly score is actually a great predictor of whether a biopsy is going to be benign or malignant. So now, this is a data set of only uh, about 700 biopsies. Think how useful this is if you had a very large unlabeled data set, right? Imagine a data set with 
millions of credit card transactions uh, or billions of network events where it's not feasible to actually go through and have a human being you know, label each one as fraud or not fraud or hacker or not hacker. But you can take anomaly detection, you can run it on this unlabeled data set, and it will just find stuff that looks weird, right? And you'll get a looks weird score for each data point uh, without having to have a human go in and label the data. And so that's another great thing about this approach is you don't have to know what you're looking for, right? We're just telling BigML, hey, I'm just looking for stuff that looks weird. Give me a weirdness score for each of these data points. Uh, and this is hugely useful if you know that there is some adversary kind of lurking in the data, right? And that adversary is typically gonna be uh, a minority class, the smaller class. Uh, in the example I just gave, uh, that adversary is cancer, right? But you can just as easily imagine the adversary being hackers, uh, fraudsters, and so forth. And that was it. I think we have some time for a little Q&A. Thank you.